Hey, I'm Roberto, uncle, dreamer, and Disney kid at heart. As a business profit strategist and community leader, I've had the chance to work with multiple business owners and community leaders ranging from napkin ideas to eight-figure brands. And along the way, there's been some failures, amazing successes, and lots of friendships have been born. Now, community leaders come from all walks of life and business. They might identify as a coach, consultant, speaker, a nonprofit leader, or a maker, but here's the thing. They all have one thing in common. They are purpose-driven brands and leaders seeking to create an even bigger impact in the world with and for their communities. This is the show that brings together community leaders and business leaders with communities to reveal their mistakes and successes to building and creating a highly impactful and profitable community. This is the Connected Community Leader Podcast. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Connected Community Leader Podcast. And today, I am here with a guest that's going to help you declutter yourself. And that might be decluttering your mind, decluttering your office, decluttering your business, or if you're like me, that very special drawer in the kitchen. Y'all know the drawer I'm talking about. It's got a little bit of everything. Now, Sarah Mueller is a Wharton grad turned decluttering expert, and we're going to need to learn a little bit more about that one. The founder of the Decluttering Club community, where hundreds of thousands of people have learned how to let go of the excess so they have time for what matters most to them. Now, she's been featured on major news outlets such as Forbes, USA Today, Good Housekeeping, and Market Watch, and she's also been featured by Facebook as a community leader. Now, y'all, here's the thing. Without exaggeration, she runs the most supportive encouraging and productive decluttering and organizing groups on Facebook. And her work has been life-changing for her students and community members. And if that wasn't enough, she's also a single mom to four of the most wonderful boys on the planet. And y'all, I can tell you it's true. Like she does like shopping list on Facebook where she's just like, okay, there's a random sleepover. What are we having today? And it's just like everybody chips in to figure out what it is. So welcome, Sarah. I'm glad to have you here today. Wow, what uh, what an intro, Roberto. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. This is amazing. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you. So, okay, I'm curious. How did we go Wharton grad de- to decluttering? What, what was that journey like? <laughs> it's a little bit of a, a, a stretch, isn't it? it? It is. Well, you know, I mean, I've always, you know, so I, I used to run an e-commerce business. So I did, you know, marketing and business. I like, I like running businesses. It's so much fun. But I also kind of like, you know, sharing all the mom stuff, sharing all the household stuff, you know, telling people how to get things done. And back when I was uh, a homeschool mom, I was a homeschool mom for nine or so years. And ironically, now I'm a homeschool mom again, (laughs) because my kids are home from school. But um, it was just, I needed an outlet. And I wanted to to share the things that were just really working for us. You know, I mean, if you've got a, a couple kids, a bunch of kids, things get pretty busy. And I had a lot of systems in place that just make things easier, you know, again, so I can live my life and do the stuff that I want to do without, you know, constantly trying to tear my hair out or feeling like my home is a disaster. You know, I didn't want to be in that place. And it turns out that other people were interested in how I thought about things and what I had to say. So it kind of evolved from there. Going from e-commerce to decluttering. Now I know, you know, Technically, you're still kind of in e-commerce, just in a different way. Yeah. Um, now it's uh, information. And so as you made this pivot and you started taking the systems and everything that you have in your business and in your life, right? So you could be mom and be there for those moments. What's one thing that you wish you would have known when you began this community? Because I don't, I don't know anybody that wakes up and is just like, well, actually, you know, community leaders even as a whole, I think that they have this vision, right? But that one day when it like clicks and it all works, now hundreds of thousands of students later, what do you wish you would have known when you started all this? Oh, so many things, <laughs> you know, so many things. But, um, you know, I think it's just been really important to, you know, people always say, you know, people will tell you what they want. And, you know, that didn't necessarily happen at the beginning. And so I think like patience is, you know, I mean, you hear this, right? We all know we got to be patient, but we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But just tell me what to do. Right? Just give me the answer. 
the bad news is that, you know, you have to, you have to be patient, you have to wait, you have to listen, and it will evolve over time. Um, it, it, it's not the same as it was when I started this three or four years ago, you know, things have, have grown and we could have never anticipated what things are going to look like right now, you know, last year and the year before and the year before. So it's really changed to meet people's needs and I'm sure it will still change, but they do tell you, you know, they do tell you what they want. So then you have to figure out how can I deliver what my people need, you know, in a way that works for all of us, you know, how can I best serve them? And that's going to, that's going to evolve. You know, I mean, I couldn't show up as a leader that like the way that I do today, there's no way I could have done that two years ago. Uh, So I wasn't ready. You know, they weren't ready. I wasn't ready. And now, you know, we're just in a new place and it's just, it's so exciting. And it's, you know, it's just good news because we can all grow, you know, as leaders, as communities, our, our people are growing along with us. And when we invite them to do that, it's the most wonderful thing in the world. It really is. Love that. And as you've had this experience, you know, the world's in a, we'll say unique place right now. And I say unique because I know you you mentioned earlier, hey, I'm, I, I was a homeschooling mom and now I'm a mom again, a homeschooling mom again. And, you know, I don't think that we'd, we've ever been at a point in modern society anyways, where we've ever had so many people homeschooling and not even by choice. Like it was a, hi, you're here, you're a homeschool mom now. And so as you've been on that journey, and I know that you've got a a massive community, they love you and you love them. I wish, I think that some of them get to know how much you pour into it. Like even in the background, the, just the conversations you have with other leaders to make sure that you're serving them at the highest level. Will you, you know, share a bit about what decluttering is and that, you know, is it just, you're that, like I said, the kitchen drawer that I have, because Lord knows I have one. <laughs> but but what is decluttering and what is the community? I love that question. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people kind of think, well, decluttering is just kind of cleaning up. And yeah, but also not really. You know, it's not just really like putting things away, right? That's not the way I think of it anyway. So I consider decluttering getting rid of things that are not serving you, right? So And you get to decide, right, if something is serving you and you use it once a year and you're, you know, you have room and you don't have negative consequences from that, then that's fantastic. I'm all in. Um, But what people often discover and what what we really love to share with people is that, you know, when you take a look at what's in that drawer or in that cupboard or in that basement (laughs) or in that catch all room, you will be shocked at what you find, things that are there that you had no idea were there, Uh, you know, again, in the drawer, you know, in that little space um, or in your entire house. And it is wonderful when you start letting them go, you know? And so that's what we do. We don't, we don't tell people that if they should keep something or not, that's not my job. None of my business what anybody decides to keep. They are the ones that need to decide. Um, But what we do is we help them in a gentle way, you know, in a manageable way that doesn't overwhelm them. We help them go through the process of of deciding, hey, do I want to keep this? Is it serving me? Am I keeping it for a reason that I like or am I keeping it because it's, you know, it's stressing me out? It's causing me guilt to think about letting it go. You know, all of that. There's a ton of um, emotions behind why we keep or don't keep things. And so that is, you know, that's where we go. You know, we start with really simple, you know, like you said, like the, the coffee mugs, you know, can you get rid of some coffee mugs? Um, People again are shocked when they take a look and go, you know, wow, I didn't realize we had all of these. And so, you know, we kind of, we do this as a community, you know, everybody who's joined our community has this common uh, experience. We've kind of onboarded them. So they all done some of the same things, which really creates a really fun culture and, um, you know, we walk them through that. And then we get to the deeper stuff, you know, kind of on the backside of that as well. I was sitting over here kind of chuckling at the the coffee cup example, because Warren and I are those people that, listen, we had at one point, I don't know, maybe 60-ish, give or take a few coffee mugs. And we, with the help of my mother, my mother was like, why do you need all this crap? <laughs> Tried to get rid of a few. And it, it ended up being more than a few. We ended up with about 10. Um, and it was interesting, the 10 that we kept, because it was just like, oh, well, this was my dad's coffee mug. And so like, since my dad passed in 2019, I want this one for that reason. And like you said, you don't realize sometimes the things that you have in your life 
how much emotion or or memory or experience is tied into them. And I didn't even realize until like my mom gently helped us. And I'm going to say even not so gently. And I know my mom's probably listened to this. She just said, you don't need this and took it and threw it in the trash. And sometimes some of us need that. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm proud to say that we're back up to like 20 coffee cups. <laughs> You're back up back to 20. To- <laughs> That's awesome. I thought, well, you know, it's so true though, because everything has a story, right? It really does. And uh, I, re- I think that's what makes us almost who we are. What is your story? You know, how did you get where you are? Like that's important. And uh, that's a big part of, you know, of our lives. So, yeah. yeah it is. And, you know, what I, the other thing that I, I, I write down, um, why well, I wrote down, I didn't write down, I wrote down. Y'all, I, I know English is my first language, and but y'all, y'all know sometimes I just like, I mess up the tenses and everything in my head. And so <laughs> what I was writing down when you were sharing there is I wrote down, I was like, you know, as we declutter our life, we can declutter our mind. Yes. And that's what I really yes. wrote down from what you said is yeah. decluttering life allows us to declutter our mind. And I was like, wow, that's actually kind of like, special oh, there. Yeah. Like, That's to, really good. You know, it's so true because when, um, you know, when our lives are full, you know, of physical clutter, virtual clutter, uh, schedule clutter, you know, like hobbies, volunteer, like it just goes on and on. And it's all, it all has a similar effect. Um, and it makes it just, it makes it really hard to find those things that we want to do, the things that are important, you know, whether it's space in your, t- in your life for, you know, dinner with your family or a vacation or, you know, just a little piece of quiet. Um, it's so important. I think that's the one thing that we kind of help people do that we're really good at is helping people focus, you know, because it's hard to focus if they're, if your house is full of stuff, where do you start? You know, that's our number one question. How do I start? Where do I start? You start with your coffee mugs. Oh, okay. Now I know where to start. And we help them. We help them focus. Everyone complains that they have ADHD and, you know, the squirrel syndrome and all of that. Um, and we help people deal with that. And uh, it, it really works. It's kind of, it's kind of amazing how well it works. So if someone was getting started and, you know, um, we have a, the self-proclaimed hoarders, we have people that may not realize they're hoarders, but everybody else in their life knows that they are. And then we've got the people that are just like, well, I just like to collect stuff. And it's not even so much uh, a hoarding. It's a, they, they collect these things for all the memories of it, right? And so as someone were to say, hey, look, I need some help. I am at the place where maybe they didn't even know decluttering was a word. What are some of the things that they can do to get started in that decluttering journey. Uh, I know you do some 10 minute decluttering challenges. And so if you'll tell us about those and also just, you know, maybe one or two things that they can do today if they want. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you're so right. Like sometimes people just, people need to get to the point where they are ready to let go and they may not know how to do that uh, or where to start, but that's okay. But they really need to be willing, you know, because if you're not willing, then, you're just not going to do it. You know, you can, you can't also, uh, you know, people show up in our community all the time. They say, you know, I really want to help my, my friend, my mother, my father, you know, and we say, you can't like, you can't go there. All you can do is set an example. Um, and you know, people just, don't, I, I try never to give unsolicited advice. I don't always succeed, but, um, you know, it's just not welcome. I don't always succeed at that either. (laughs) It's not welcome. But when you're ready, when you're ready, you know, then you can just kind of get curious and you can say, you know what, I wonder what, what could I get rid of here? And again, we really advocate, um, focusing in and we call it putting on your blinders. Okay. So I don't know. You ever go to like, have you ever gone to like race a horse race or brother? Probably. You know, so I, I, I have, and I've seen them on TV and when you said put on blinders, I literally pictured myself because <laughs> I, I can be so ADD uh-huh. that when I go into even just like, a, let's say we're about to launch a product or something, I literally have to put on blinders and yes. like, and even tell Warren, like, 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 so when I wrote my last book, I told Warren, I'm, I'm booking a hotel room for three days. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he said, why? I was like, because I just need to be in a place where I can focus. So in that case, the hotel was the blinders, but I, 
Uh, yes, yeah. so I get it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's that's perfect, right? Because you knew, hey, all these distractions, I can't focus, right? And so doing that in your house can be really challenging. So we kind of give people that mental image. Hey, put on your blinders. You know, we know that the kitchen all needs work, right? Needs work with the air quotes. But, you know, you need to forget about it. And we need to focus in on that junk drawer. You know, that's where you're working and forget about all the rest and just, you know, and set the timer and see what you've got there. Take a look, you know, empty it out. You'll be surprised. You'll probably have some good laughs. You might find some treasures, um, you know, and just be willing. It's, you know, what can you let go of? Um, a lot of times people don't want to go through this process because they think, well, I could never, you know, they go to like the worst case so that, you know, they, their whole house has a lot of stuff in it. And they say, well, I could never get rid of, you know, that grandfather clock and my grandmother's china. Um, well, you don't have to do that. How about we start with the coffee mugs? You know, like, let's keep it simple. Um, you know, you can get to that point if you want, but um, there's a whole lot of easier stuff that you can do uh, before you have to dig into the really, really tough stuff. So, you know, let's start simple. Why not? And see how it goes. I like it. And so as people find that, start simple. And I know we've mentioned the kitchen drawer a couple times, completely like, not even just the technical thing. What is the weirdest thing somebody ever said they had in their, like a kitchen drawer? <laughs> you know, we had uh, we had a woman who cleaned out her father. Her father-in-law had passed away, and he was a hoarder. Um, I don't know if he was self-proclaimed or not, but um, she openly described him as a hoarder. She found um, like some. She found like a box full of I don't know ten thousand seahorses, right? And um, and they had she, he had a he had a squirrel tail framed in a shadow box and there was a label on it that said Chippy's tail. <laughs> so, so we had some good laughs. So she, she shared a whole bunch of other things that, she, that they found when they were cleaning out his house. We're like, we have no idea why he saved these things, but he did. They found, uh, remember they found, I think it was over $40,000 in uncashed checks in a box and they were able to have most of them reissued. It was, it was a lot of, it, people just don't always open their mail. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I, it, it's, I can understand, y'all. I don't, I don't know what y'all were thinking as you, as you hear this. I can understand, uh, like, not cashing a check. I could understand not cashing forty thousand dollars in checks just because you didn't open your mail. I'm, I'm still kind of stuck on Chippy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? right? <laughs> it was, uh, it was interesting for sure. Yeah. So as you've grown this community, um, you know, we had the opportunity to meet through Facebook community summit. Um, and I remember meeting you and getting to talk to you a bit afterwards. And it was even one of those things, even at Facebook community summit at first, you were just like, like, why me? Like, how did I end up? here. And so as a community leader, what's this journey been like for you to go from, I have a Facebook group to running a business now with hundreds of thousands of people have been through your challenges. Um, what are some of the things that you've learned along the way in building a community? Ah, you know, oh my gosh. Um, I'm getting chills. <laughs> You know, it's it's so good, right? It is. It is so good. And, you know, I've just learned that this is this is really important work. You know, this is this is work worth doing. Uh, people need this. Actually, a lot of people need this work. And so, you know, I have no problem showing up and saying this is like this is life changing. Like I, I do change people's lives. I didn't quite know that, I think, at some level, like when we met a year and a half ago, like I. I was like, yeah, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of nice, kind of good. You know, people are excited, but now I'm like, holy cow, um, no exaggeration. This is very important work that we are doing and people and people see results like really quickly. And we just finished a 10 day challenge and people were, <laughs> people were just over the moon excited. And then a, a lot of them joined our membership, which was so much fun. But, um, I mean, I just, you know, I'm just humbled. I really am. I'm just absolutely humbled that people uh, show up to listen to me over and over and over again, and that, and that they do what I say, <laughs> you know. So, I, you know, I take this responsibility very, very seriously. Um, you know, I just, I love hearing what's going on, and you know, I just, I think the more success that that we have as as a community, as a business, the more I want to show up 
you know, as the best version of myself that I can be, you know, the, the more I want to grow as a leader as well, uh, because it's not, you know, it's not about me. It's, it's not about me. It's about what, what we're doing for people. And so I don't have any problem, you know, showing up in that way because I realize, you know, this is, this is just, this is the message. We were talking about that a little bit before. This is what, uh, what I can give to the world, you know, and I think maybe now a little bit more than before, but I think this message has been important, you know, for, you know, ever since I've been sharing it, it's just that, you know, like you're more than your stuff. It's really kind of what it comes down to. And a lot of people don't even realize that they have been believing the opposite, but once they, you know, once they hear it, they go, Oh yeah. You know, I realized I was sort of like, I felt like I was, um, I, I was, you know, kind of a failure as a person because my house is messy or, you know, I felt all this judgment and I'm very isolated. So we just, you know, we just open the curtains and let the sun in and, and there's just so much freedom. So I just, I'm so excited to be offering this to people, you know, and, and just ways that I could never have imagined, you know, a couple of years ago. So it's, it's been really exciting. You know, and you said a couple key things there for other people that are leading communities or even thinking about, you know, maybe you haven't started your community yet. And you're just like, hey, like I've got some people, but do I really want a community? And, and Sarah said a few key things. And one of them was is, you know, the more that you show up and serve, the more that you're going to get. And, and that doesn't always mean the financial return. Yes, the financial return will come. But when you can see those people's results, that is that that driving force. At least for me, it is too. Just like you, Sarah. And you know, I, one of the things I find in common with community leaders that are running profitable communities is they're always there to serve. And y'all, here's the thing: that may not always mean online. You know, some of the the biggest community leaders and the biggest communities that I work with as a consultant do way more offline than they do online. And so as a leader, what's awesome about the world that we live in today, even in the midst of, you know, Sarah and I are recording this in July, 2020, the world is in COVIDville and Pandemicville and Maskville and US politicsville. And there's a lot of crazy things going on in the world. And as a community leader, as a leader, you get to utilize your voice, your message, and whether that is online offline or a combination of the two get to make your difference in the world. And, you know, there's been so much happened the past few months. And I know that we've made pivots in our business. I know that Sarah's made some also. And so I guess this would lead to another question, really, Sarah, is, you know, community leaders, it's always about the pivot. It's about the change to serve our communities where they are, um, how they want. And I, I don't know about you, but for me, that, that wasn't always easy. And we made some mistakes along the way. So as you've been building this as a leader, what would you say was like the biggest failure or the biggest setback that you had in building the community and building the business? And what did you learn from it? Oh, wow. That's such a good question. Um, you know, I mean, I was I was sharing, I think, in one of the other groups that we're in recently that um, I up until recently, I have never met a goal. Right. So I set goals and I'm telling you, I've never met up until like last month, never met them, <laughs> you know, and I guess that means I set big goals. But um, it is it is so hard, you know, when you think, OK, you know, I've got I've got all these people. I've got this. Like, I'm super excited about this idea. And oh, OK, you know, yeah, we, we sold some, but you know, gosh, what does it mean that I, that I didn't get nearly as many people or I didn't make nearly as much money as I thought I would. Um, that was, that was really, really hard. <laughs> you know, it just really like, okay, you know, you have to kind of take stock. Do I, do I need to pivot? Right. Is there, is there a pivot here? Or is it just time? You know, how do I, how do I use this experience to grow? And so I think that's been really important for me. You know, a lot of people look at my, my community and they think, oh, my goodness, you know, you must be a gazillionaire already. Right. And, um, you know, some of this is, is, you know, you see big numbers, um, but it doesn't automatically translate into 
you know, into revenue. It really doesn't. And um, that was a really long, really, really painful process for me. Um, you know, and I just had to be okay with that, you know, and being like, okay, we're still, we believe in the message. We, we know that we help people. We just have to figure out how to help more of them. And so I think that that's been it for me, you know, being willing to, to keep going. You know, I think the first time I launched my membership, I got 30 people in it. You know, and I don't know know what the goal was, but I certainly could better believe I thought I was going to get more than 30. Like it was more than 30. (laughs) Like 30 was not my, not the number that I had in mind, you know, so I had to be okay with that. And then, you know, what? I showed up for those 30 people. Like, I think a lot of them are still in on board. So you just have to be okay with it, not getting it the way you think it's going to work out the first time or the second time or the third time. You know, and you just get better every time. Um, you know, nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> you know, nobody wants to hear that. It might take you a couple of years, you know, but it's true. And then I think that, you know, when you look back, you go, wow, that went really fast, you know. But uh, when you're in the middle of it, it is it is not fun. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. let me get to the good stuff, <laughs> you know. So that hopefully that answers that question. It, it, it does. And then you get there and you're just like, and, and I don't know about you. Um, well, I guess I'm going to step back and say, I'm like you and that most of the goals that I've set, I haven't hit. Um, and that was a shift for me because at, when I first started my business, I, I hit all my goals. And I remember sitting down with one of my mentors who, uh, Tom Antion at the time, who is also one of the podcast episodes and I was almost like, Tom, like business is great. I'm hitting all of my goals. And he said, well, maybe your goals aren't big enough. And so mm-hmm. I love the exact opposite side where you're just like, I haven't hit my goals. Uh, I think that's amazing because, you know, my, my first beta launch, man, years ago, God, I was just like, I'm going to get 10 people. And I remember I got like 11 and I was like, yes. And, you know, but, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, right. It, it's, it's, it's shifted and it's changed. And so I think it's, it's awesome. So what I took from what you said is, you know, your biggest failure, which I think is, is an awesome success at the same time, because I think leaders, we can sometimes learn more from our failures and successes is to keep dreaming big, to keep pushing towards that and to keep seeking feedback along the way to be able to adjust. Um, and I think that that's something that that every single leader can learn from. And if y'all haven't read it yet, I highly encourage y'all to read the book Failing Forward by John Maxwell. Um, mm-hmm. It's a book I read years ago that actually changed my perspective on that it's okay to make mistakes and to fail <laughs> because um, especially from a Latino culture, y'all, you don't fail. Like, mm-hmm. you do not fail. Like, oh my gosh, you will hear about it from your mother. You do not make the family look bad. So maybe that's why I set low goals. There's, okay, now I'm going to go to therapy after conversation with Sarah. <laughs> but speaking of books, <laughs> you know, um, one of the things I love about you is that you're always learning mm, and yes. realizing that, you know, hey, I know my space. Like when it comes to decluttering, I'm the best person at it. Hundreds of thousands of people agree with me. That's why we have our memberships. We have our community. And there's other things in business that, you know, probably aren't the biggest strength in the world. And so in that, in this lovely journey, um, what would you say, and you can pick the category, you know, like Jeopardy, pick the category, pick the dollar amount. You know, what are some of the, either the best books or courses or podcasts you know, that have helped you along the way, the resources that keep you going as a leader that other leaders might be able to glean from? Uh, I, I'm a reader. <laughs> and I think, especially lately, I have just been buying books like there's no tomorrow. And I'm reading like four books at a time. Um, I absolutely adore 8020 Sales and Marketing by Perry Marshall. Like, I think I've read that book at least three times. I, should, I haven't read it this year. It's completely highlighted. There's notes. It's, you know, it's, it's ragged. So I, I adore that book. I think that book has been absolutely pivotal for me. I also like um, oh, so many. I love, I love Simplify by Richard Koch. That's a fantastic book. Uh, can you tell I'm all about like, <laughs> I'm all about simplifying, like, you know, simplify your life, simplify your business. <laughs> you know, there's so much value, you know, I'm cutting out what isn't, you know, isn't the best. 
you know, whether it's in your business, in your, you know, in your finances, in your time, in your house, in your possessions, uh, you know, and what's going on in your head, all of it. It's so, it's so useful. You can take this idea anywhere. So I love, I love that book. Um, I love the Russell Brunson, you know, work. I love that's really fun. So that's good stuff too. Um, Actually, I need to read the last one. Yeah, I, I have it. I haven't, secrets. I haven't cracked it up. <laughs> I have it too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's so fun, you know, because when you, you know, when you do read a book, you, you know, even if you take one thing away from it, you know, then I think it's worth it. I love getting exposed to different ideas and, you know, hearing how people do things. So I love that. Uh, the other one, um, Influence by Cialdini. Cialdini. That's a challenging, but really, really wonderful book. Okay, y'all. Y'all need to go pick up that book because you, Sarah, are like the third guest that's mentioned it. <laughs> so there's something to it, y'all. I'm just saying. <laughs> it is. It's it's a, it's very dense, but it's it's excellent. Yeah. Awesome. And so that's the book side. Um, and I'm like you. I love to read. Now there are days I still love to actually crack the book and flip the pages. I don't know. There's something about just holding a book to me. Um, but I also love Audible and listen to several books there. Um, outside of books, like, are there one or two courses that have helped your journey um, that other community leaders may not even realize that that's a gap for them in their business right now? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I have done probably, I think you've done probably most of the courses I have. So I, ha I you know, I'm a big fan of courses. Um, but you may or may not have heard of this one, but the Life Coach School has that, and Brooke Castillo of the Life Coach School has changed my life in a way that nobody else has. She is my number one teacher. Uh, I have been a member of her membership for almost two years now, and it's life changing, you know. And so, I mean, she's got a podcast; it's amazing. So, I just recommend you know go start at the beginning because she is, she will kick your butt. Let me tell you, uh, in a really good way. Well, y'all heard it. If you want to get your, your butt kicked, go to the Life Coach School. Um, yeah. uh, and actually, no, I think that's great. Actually, I was talking to someone this morning. Um, actually, well, you know, I was on the phone with April. Mm -hmm. And so it was so funny. She actually mentioned Life Coach School this morning uh, during our oh, conversation. Well, she lives um, in Houston, I think, or Dallas. Really? I Which one that. is it? Maybe it's Dallas. Texas is Texas, at least to me. No, some people <laughs> oh, may not agree with that. Me too. You know, I'm just like, we're, our, we're our own country over here. <laughs> we feel that way sometimes. Uh, and and y'all, I know that's going to piss somebody off, but just deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's okay for you to say it. Maybe not for me, but. <laughs> well, I can say it because we were. Like Texas legitimately was. We were the Republic of Texas. So it's based on fact. They taught me that in seventh grade Texas history. <laughs> See who says you don't learn things in school. <laughs> Absolutely. So share with us more uh, about the, the challenges you do, how people can get information and connect with you a bit more online. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, so we have, uh, we have a free Facebook group. We have our free 10 minute challenge series. Okay. You can find it all. Uh, we are just uh, like, tomorrow, I guess, probably by the time this, this podcast is live, we, our new website will be available. It's called declutteringschool.com. And so that's where you can find us. You can get our free 10 minute challenges and then you can work through the other things that we have. Um, you know, if you want, we'd love it when you start out with our free challenges though, because that's the perfect introduction that will get you moving. And then, uh, you know, depending on what we have going on, uh, you can join in on some, some other things. Awesome. So y'all be sure to find Sarah at declutteringschool.com. I love it. Yep. It's so official. Yeah. And as we wrap up today's conversation, you know, what one piece of advice would you give people? You know, whether that be life advice or decluttering advice or, hey, I've got a community idea, but everybody thinks I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> what one piece of advice would you give our listeners today? Oh, one. I have to pick just one. <laughs> or three, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, well, you know, I would say, I would say you have to, you have to figure out like it, 
everybody's kind of in a hurry, right? You're in a hurry to build your business. You're in a hurry to, um, you know, to clean out your house. You're in a hurry to have your kids get a little older so they can sleep through the night. You know, we're in a hurry all, all the time. And when we're doing that, we're, we're telling ourselves life is going to be better when we get there. And, you know, I can't wait until, I can't wait until it's summer. I can't wait until it's winter. I can't. Um, and what I have to tell you is it's not any better there than it is here. Right. And so you might have more money, you might have more sleep, you might have, you know, uh, you might lose the 10 pounds and you might have a nicer body, but you're still going to have problems like, you know, skinny people have problems just like people who need to lose 10 pounds. Um, and so when we realize that, then um, we can just relax and realize, hey, I can I can enjoy my life right now. I don't have to change anything to enjoy and love my life right now. And uh, ironically, when we can kind of relax into that, then uh, then we can have the energy to do those things that we want to do, you know, not because we know they're going to make our lives better, but just because because we want to be an example of what is possible or because because it's it's satisfying to to build that business or, you know, or to get in shape or to run the marathon or, or to raise the kids. Like, that's why we do it, not because we know that it's going to be amazing when we raise four kids. You know, that is like, that's, that's hard work, right? We're not going to love it, but um, we're doing it because that's who we are and because that's what we want, how, how we want to show up in the world. Um, so that's, I guess that's what I want everybody to know. You know, ironically, I tell you, yes, clean up your house. You're going to love it. But I also want you to know you can love your house right now, uh, right now in exactly the state it's in. You can love yourself. You don't have to change yourself to to love yourself and i think that's we we just have such a problem with that i think people don't know that you know and we're always looking 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 we're looking for external validation we're looking for things to change and then they do change and then we're like oh crap <laughs> you know like why don't i feel any better and so if we can just realize hey that this is available this this joy this happiness um this fulfillment is available to me today like isn't that fantastic news like, I think this is the best news ever. It really is. That's amazing. <laughs> so, y'all, there was a lot there. And I'm going to put it in what I heard, to, uh, two very simple phrases. One, you don't have to change yourself to love yourself. And two, be happy now. Mm -hmm. Like, be yeah. happy now. And um, especially all this going on in the world, y'all, yes. be happy now and so um sarah thank you so much for being with us today and y'all be sure to check out sarah over at declutteringschool.com and find her on facebook take one of the, the 10 minute challenges i was about to say 10 day challenges she does those too but start with a 10 minute challenge <laughs> because hey ease your way into it just like you ease your way into a business or everything else you know at mm -hmm. some point you might do 10 days that someday you may choose a lifestyle of decluttering but I think anybody can do anything for 10 minutes. And so uh, yes. be sure to join Sarah over at Decluttering School. And Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Roberto. This has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Y'all be sure to subscribe and to share this podcast with anybody else that you believe could learn from other guest experts like Sarah, Tom Antion, Landon Ray, and some of our other guests. And I'll chat with y'all soon. Bye-bye.